Welcome back to the Daily D. Today we're doing another recipe. This one is for homemade pizza dough. I'm making pizzas tomorrow, but today I'm going to be making the dough. And this dough lasts for up to 14 days in the refrigerator. So you could make it the day before pizzas and then have some this week, pizzas this week, and pizzas next week with the same dough. It takes about two hours to rise, and then you want it in the fridge for about three hours before you use it. So I tend to make it the day before, but you can make it the day of if you wanted to. So it's really a simple recipe. You're going to put in one and three quarter cup warm water. This is a little bit above body temperature. You don't want it hot, and you don't want it boiling because you don't want to kill the yeast. And you are going to put in half a tablespoon of kosher salt. And as you can see, kosher salt are big granules of salt. It's not the regular um, fine granules that you get for table salt. And you're going to put in half a tablespoon as well of granulated yeast. Now you can get these at bulk food stores and such. I keep mine in a glass container with a tight lit screw on lid in the fridge and it will last for years like that. So once you get those three ingredients in you're going to mix them up. They don't have to be completely dissolved and completely mixed. You just want to do it a little bit to get it started. Okay, as you can see, it's not quite mixed, but that's okay. Next, you're going to put in three and three quarter cup flour, and you're going to do the scoop. And I don't know, wipe swipe method. So you're going to do one cup, two cups, three cups, and then three quarters. I've just got a quarter cup measuring here, measuring cup here. One quarter, makes a half, and that makes three quarters. So then you're just going to mix it with a wooden spoon. You can also do this in a heavy duty mixer with a, a dough paddle or a special dough whisk, but I just do it like this because it's not something you know when you think of dough and bread you think of something you're going to have to spend forever kneading and you don't have to so once it gets like this I just take my hands and I just make sure to incorporate all of the the flour and it's going to be, as you can tell, it's not really dry. It's, um, if you check my hands out, it's going to be a bit sticky. And that's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's not your typical dough. And then once all of that's incorporated, you don't have to um, knead it at all. You're just going to put a lid on it. Now, it's not an airtight lid. This one can be airtight, but right now, you're just going to put the lid on loosely. You can also use a plastic container with a lid and just put it on and leave the lid, uh, the plastic top ajar a little bit. And you're just going to set it on the table or the counter for about two hours until the top it's going to raise and then the top's going to kind of go flat. Rather than mounded, it's going to kind of go flat. And when it's like that, you're going to put, put it in the fridge uh, to cool it for about three hours. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in a couple of hours. See you then. So it's been a couple of hours now. 
and as you can see there's all moisture on here the yeast has is active and you can see some air bubbles in it and it's kind of flat but it, see how much bigger it is than it was before so this is all done so I'm now going to cover it up and I'm going to put it in the fridge and it'll last in there for two weeks but tomorrow I'm going to take it out and show you how I make the pizzas so we'll see you tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon welcome back it's another day and we're going to be making our pizzas I first wanted to go over some of the things that I use I'll put in the description uh, places where you can buy them if you're interested um, you're going to need a rolling pin uh, these are the newfangled ones without uh, the handles. I use them sometimes. I like them. Uh, but my trusty one is my 40-year-old rolling pin. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's just become an extension of me uh, that I, I really like it. Pizza cutter. You can use the newfangled ones or you can use these and basically you just go like this in the pizza and you would think it doesn't cut it but it actually does it's really good these aren't necessary but if you have one they're great this is called a pizza peel and you're going to be putting your pizza uh, once you've got the dough shaped you're going to put be putting some cornmeal on this so it doesn't stick you're going to be putting the dough on here and then building your pizza on here and then you're going to be sliding it into the oven. You can even cook these on the grill, the pizzas on the grill if you want. And this is my trusty pizza stone. It looks terrible. I've had it for many years and um, what you're going to do is you're going to put this in the oven and you're going to set the, your oven to the highest temperature it will go. Most ovens, it's 500 to 550. Mine goes to 550. And you're going to let this stone heat up in your oven for a minimum of half an hour, up to an hour. You know, some people are worried about, um, you know, overusing electricity and things like that. But it does require minimum um, half hour and this is just my um, my uh, I don't even know what it, uh, what I roll things out on uh, Jesse what's it made out of like silicone. silicone it's a silicone mat that I roll things out on I can't live without this it sticks to all your surfaces so I'm going to put this in the oven and get it going to heat up and then I'm going to get out the dough and we're going to get going making pizzas. So my stove has heated, stone has heated in the oven for half an hour and I'm going to get the pizzas ready now. Now you can make these on the grill. You would just uh, make the pizza um, crust and then you would um, put it on the grill and wait until it's browned on one side flip it over and as soon as you flip it over then you would make the pizza on the par um, on the browned part and then close the lid and let it cook for a few. Uh, if you don't have a pizza stone you can do these on a cookie sheet. I put them on here and use this to transfer it to my stone but then when I'm actually um, taking out the cooked pizza I shove a uh, a cookie sheet under it I find that best so I've got some um, this is a Parmesan cheese container I love this it uh, does a great job now you take about an orange size piece and you're gonna put flour on your hands. Now you, the flour is not meant to be incorporated. Uh, you're just using it so it doesn't stay sticky. So you're just going to pull it under on all the sides like that. So it's a nice ball. Now you're going to notice it's all like this on the other side and that's fine. 
So you're going to put it down. Now, when I first started making these, and I haven't made these in quite a while, so not sure if they'll still be the same way. Um, but we called these ugly pizzas. And the reason why we called them ugly pizzas was because I could not get them round or anything close to it. They were, uh, yeah, they were really bad. So you can stretch these a little bit. You're going to stretch them on the ends, not in the middle. And this is just to loosen things up so it's easier to roll out. And you want these to be about an eighth of an inch thick. Now you can also take uh, the leftover and you can freeze them in individual balls so that you can then unthaw them. Now, I'm not very good at getting them completely round. I don't work at a pizza place, but um, we like our ugly pizza, and we don't care if it's ugly. It's become kind of like a family joke. Now, if this sticks a little bit to your counter or your pad, that's okay, because sticking sometimes actually makes it easier. But it is sticking a bit to my rolling pin, so I am just going to put a little bit on the top. And this is almost done. Okay, so once I get it out like this, I don't build a crust on the outside. We don't really care for crust. Now this is cornmeal. I, um, I prefer cornmeal. If you don't have cornmeal, you can use flour. But a little bit sticks to the bottom of the crust, and it actually gives it a great flavor. So we use that. And so I'm just going to take this. wrap it around and lay it out and this makes it so that it it doesn't stick to your pizza peel I'm using uh, just the great value pizza sauce you know you can use um, just pasta sauce if you don't have pizza sauce but this great value one is actually pretty good and you're gonna leave about half an inch I, well, they say half an inch, but I always leave a little bit less. And I find a spoon is the best way to mix this. Now, you can put as much sauce on this as you like. You can put it nice and thick if you all like uh, sauce. I'm not a big, I love pasta, but for some reason, I'm not a, I'm not a big pizza. Uh, I don't care for a lot of sauce on my pizza. And we like lots of cheese on ours. And then um, the pepperoni. I prefer to try and get the thinnest pepperoni I can. There's something you get at the grocery store that is uh, really thick, and I find it just doesn't cook up as much. So try and get it. There used to be a kind, I don't even remember the name of it, um, but they used to sell it at Freshco and Zares, and I loved it. 
we all loved it, but I haven't seen it in a couple of years, hence the reason I haven't been making pizzas, because the other kinds I tried I didn't like, but this one I just discovered it's theirs, and it's not too bad, so we're going to give it a try. So these will shrink in, these, um, these pepperoni, they'll shrink up or they should. So I'm now, now going to put this in the oven uh, for, for approximately 10 minutes. going to set my timer and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. So our pizza is done. As you can tell, it's got a nice crisp crust. Uh, it's crust. Uh, it's crisp. It's not like those frozen pizzas you get. And I'll show you. And this actually you know, as you can see it cuts it as well so takes a little more work there so we're gonna sit back and enjoy this I'm gonna put the recipe below and I forgot to mention that the dough recipe I have listed makes approximately four pizzas this size and you can freeze them and uh, I'm getting ready to put another one in the uh, oven and thanks so much for joining us please like and subscribe comment and we hope you have a wonderful day